ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the great Miguel Nunez, my friend. What's up, Miguel? <laughs> I'm good. Lou you Nail, my favorite. Do I look at you? <laughs> Say it yes. again. Do I look at you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, Lou Nail, Nail, my favorite person on the entire planet. And you know oh, this. Honey. I just talked to her last night. She was trying to get me to come over. I oh. Her, no, I, I was just too tired. I shot all day. I couldn't come. I, I'm, I'm glad sorry. you didn't come when you were tired because you, you don't need obviously me tired. <laughs> need all your energy. That's right. <laughs> hey, Miguel, I feel like you're the guy that, pe you know, still at this point in your career, and, you know, with people getting older and then the new people coming in, I feel like you're the guy that everybody knows your face and they know certain few characters that you've done, but I feel like everybody doesn't know, like, your story or even the depth of your resume. Uh -huh. So we're here to fix all that today, Ooh, okay? Lou Nail about to put it down. Let's tell mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> so tell me about where you were born. I know I have the notes, but let's let you talk. Okay, I was born in New York. I was born in Manhattan, New York. Uh, my mother was from Wilson, North Carolina, little bitty, the smallest little town you've ever seen in your life. And I was raised on a farm. My mother was raised there with her grandparents. My mother, who I just moved in with me now, I should come meet at some point. My mm -hmm. mother ran away from home at 16 years old. And she ran away from New York and she ended up meeting James Brown. And that's how she became the writer of his number one hit, It's a Man's World. My mother wrote that song. Right. People don't know that. Yeah. We did check the yeah. credits and your mother's name is right my there. My mother wrote that song. So, this is a man's world. So she had a kid and she was out there trying to do her thing. So every time she had a kid, my grandmother had a farm. So she had eight girls and one boy. So she wanted. So when my mom had me, as soon as we got three years old, she gave us to our grandmother in North Carolina. Next, son, she had uh, seven. I got seven brothers, one sister. Everybody one year apart, and then she gave them to us. So we all ended up in Wilson. So, I so it's eight of y'all. Yeah, so it's I eight grew of up us in Wilson, North Carolina, deep, 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 deep in the. Honey, country. I know. I just came back from family reunion, Tyler, Arkansas. The eight, the eight kid. Trust me. I exactly. Know, I know deep. South. And I just had a family reunion. I had two cousins sitting there arguing, and neither one of them had teeth. <laughs> We'll talk about that later. Yeah, exactly. They're so not anyway, in need of dental care. So I go, and, I, and anyway, so I'm, I, I end up in Wilson, North Carolina. And from the day I think I could speak, my mom said the first time she spanked me, she said, I said, told her, when I become a movie star, I'm not going to buy you nothing. Yeah, it says that you have known what you wanted to do since you were three years old. Yep. Since the day I was born, my uncle came home with a Cadillac and it had California license plates because he was a Cadillac dealer. Mm -hmm. And they said, I sat on, on the street just rubbing the license plate. All day long, all day long thinking this car was in California. It's where I'm going to live and I'm going to be on TV. It's like I absolutely nail. Do you believe that manifestation can actually, like at that age that you can manifest like your future? Because I have a, a, a repressed memory of some childhood stuff too that connects me to comedy. And I never even thought that that was true until I remembered that memory. I'm like, oh my God, I'm always yeah. into this. You're a product of what you um, manifest. Yeah, yeah. I, I do believe that. Because, I, I mean, I was raised in a church. I was a PK. My grandfather was a preacher. My oh, that figures. Yeah, and we live next door to the church we own. So, but I always believed that the power of life and death is in the tongue. But I was too young for any of that. But I am a, 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 a product of, of, um, of that principle in, in living. I didn't know any of that, what they say, you know, the power of life and death is in the tongue, what you say, yeah, you manifest. Yeah. I was too young for it. But through what I did every single day of my life, I told anybody who would listen, I'm going to, I guarantee you. How are you going to guarantee? And every single person told me this. It is impossible, Miguel. You're in North Carolina. You're in the country. You're poor, you're black, you're skinny, and you're ugly. That's what I heard from every single person. They might didn't go ugly, but they would say, you're poor, you're black, you're not. They was like, you make A's and B's in school. You, you, you can do anything. You Don't think about that. They're actors in New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, Atlanta. They got agents, managers, lawyers. They got in the union. How is it possible? Your little skinny black ass from Wilson, North Carolina, out here in the tobacco field, going to get ahead of them. And I told, I guarantee you, I swear to you, Linnell, I knew it. So this can be an inspirational interview about the power, power of positivity, too. And I think your attitude has something to do with your health. I heard you ain't had a cold, nothing. I have not years. had a cold, flu, 30. I have not been sick at all. I've been sick twice you. and that was with, in 30 years, and that was both with corona. 
And I did not even know I had it. I would have been sitting here just like this, didn't even know I had it. I don't get sick, but I do do something that would shock everybody on this. That would probably be the most shocking thing that, that I would tell anybody, but Arsenio knows about it because he knew about it. Um, Eddie Murphy used to say when I told him uh, uh, that my grandparents were trying to kill me, but kerosene, <laughs> kerosene. Oh no, Miguel. Kerosene, you put in a lamp. You take a teaspoon of kerosene, you're gonna booboo more than you ever booboo, you're gonna throw up at the same time. That's because anything in your body that is not supposed to be there will get the hell out. And that's why my grandmother would line well, how us. How often do you do that? I, I do it like maybe every six months. But when we grew up, my grandmother would do it every winter. We were lying at when it was kerosene and sugar time. She would take kerosene and oh, put a little yeah. sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And every time, and never got sick because we were too many people in the house because my mom had her. Remember I told you she had eight? And we ate, so we all lived in the same house. Yeah. So it was too many, so we couldn't go to the doctor. And I promise you, I was watching um, Jeopardy years ago after I ran away from home and I was living in the first apartment in Hollywood. And I was on the floor, couch sleep. And they said, what is the number one body detoxifier on the planet for re re uh, for parasites, blah, 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 blah. And they got penicillin and all this shit. And at the end, the number one was ding, kerosene. That's amazing. Okay, so you had, because you had these dreams so early, didn't you have a nickname? What they call you? Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hollywood Newt, short for Nunez. Because when I, when I started in the first grade, I had a jean jacket. And I took a magic mark, which I could still wear and when I graduated. Um, I, had a, I, I was 75 pounds and when I graduated from high school. Yeah. How does so, that happen? That's but I was only 4'11". They, they used to call that Poe. I was only 4'11", though. Mm. I was a short, because, but I grew in one summer. Um, well, what was I telling you about? About when I called your nickname. And oh, oh. I, so I got a jean jacket and I had a, a magic marker and I wrote Hollywood on the back of it. Cause every, and every time people see me coming, oh shit, they go, no, 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 let's go, let's go. You're gonna talk about that damn Hollywood. Every, that's all I ever talked about. And so I graduated and I was working at a tobacco warehouse. Yeah. Right? And I got my check and I was like, whoa. And, and I'd already planned on what I was gonna do in the summer, da, da, da. And I was like, and I know it was God. And I'm like, whoa, I got a check. I bet you this is enough to get to Hollywood. So I just, I said, if I don't go right now, I'm going to be stuck in Wilson. I looked around the warehouse like a, and I was like, if I don't, I, I can do it. I said, the only thing stopping, I said, just don't stop. Don't stop. And I went to the man. I said, supervisor, I said, I quit. He said, we have a week in the hole check. I said, send it to my grandparents. I walk home, which is about here to the forum, but you know, going through the woods, it's not far. So I get home and there was all those people in the house, it has never been a time when there was nobody there. Fate, God. Nobody was there. I made three bologna sandwiches. I packed, made a, a, packed a suitcase, wrote a note to my grandparents, said, I'm going to Hollywood and make something out of myself. That's all, all I said. So and how I, much was the check? $127. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I didn't know. But I so this is enough to get me to Hollywood. I went to the bus station. I walked down the train track, just like a movie. I walked down the train track and I was getting sad. I was looking back. And I was thinking about all the things we did and all the bridge I had to cross that wasn't even there when they built it. And we used to slide little uh, things down the bridge. And, and I went to the bus station. I asked the white man, I said, can I get a ticket to Hollywood? He said, no. And I'm scared because I'm like a kid. And he said, you can go to Los Angeles. I said, California? He said, yes. Okay, give me a ticket. What I didn't know, which I'm going to skip ahead, was I was at Trailways. Trailways goes to downtown LA, 6th and Main, the worst street in the United States at the time, Skid Row. Skid Row. Greyhound went to Hollywood. So when he said no, I thought you had to be an actor to get into Hollywood. That's how naive I was. But you did get a, you, you, when you got this first role, how'd you get that first role? The first role I ever got was I was on a bus. And there's some guy going, sitting next to this guy, he going like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I like this. And I just like I said to everybody else, I said, hey. And I talked like this when I first got here. These, my nickname when I first got on Skid Row was Country Boy. <laughs> so, because I talked just like this. And um, and I was like, hey, my name is Miguel Nunez. I'm from 640 Cemetery Street, Wilson, North Carolina. And I came in there being an actor. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me he was going to a cattle call audition. I didn't know what the fuck that was. Right. It was a cattle call audition. And it was for a Gino's restaurant commercial. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, so I want to be an actor. He said, okay, you're going to have to get, I said, what is that? He said, this is called a resume. I said, he's here, you take that, you have to get a resume. You're going to have to get photo, da, da, da. He was help, telling me all this shit, right? So when he got off, I look and I see him get off and I see he got off in a park. I saw cameras. 
So I get to the next bus stop. I go find a copy place. I write his name off on the resume and put my name on. I went back, <laughs> went back to the park. I got a line and I got the lead in that commercial. <laughs> I still remember the lines to this day. Hit it. Like birds of a feather, we stick together. And I got a little video videotape of it too. Mm -hmm. uh, like birds of a feather, we stick together. So when we eat out, we all agree. We go to Geno's and it was a basketball team unanimously. And then I bust through the door. We go for Geno's sirloin, a one thick juicy quarter pound of beef, a 100% beef with a taste that's unreal. <laughs> <laughs> then you go, Geno's, we go for the food. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it, right? So then they, I was talking to the band. And he was like, I said, I don't know. I, know I didn't know nothing. And the guy walked up to who talking about, he said, hey, you. I said, yeah, I came back. He went. And then he told me, da, da, da. And he took me to his agent, which was David Wilder. Do you ever know him? Mm -mm. I was with him for years. Um, so anyway, he goes, um, so I took him there. And I was like, listen, my name is Miguel Nunez. I'm 640 Cemetery Street, Wilson, North Carolina. I came here to be an actor. And um, he said, like that. I said, listen, you can have all of that cattle money. I want to be on the TV. I didn't know nothing about Korea. country ass. I didn't know shit. And now it goes, so he goes, um, and then you can you can have you can have all of that money. I just want to be in the movies. I want to be on the TV in the movies. And he was like, you know what? I like you. I'm going to sign you, of course, so you can get that 10%. And I think the next 47 auditions, I probably got 42 of them. Mm, mm, mm. You're a good auditioner. <laughs> I suck at auditioning. Uh, I'm the best in the I world. I hate it. <laughs> I'm the best. What's your process for like memorizing your lines? You know later? something that's weird? I would... I used to go to auditions and an actor named Stoney Jackson. You remember Stoney? I remember Stoney. Stoney Jackson was the absolute best cold reader I've ever seen in my life. I watched him. I he, can go read. Uh, uh, it's the mem it's the, you know, I just don't. I have never memorized. Listen, it wasn't until I started producing me, like when I went in for pretty rich stuff, I'll go in my entire career. I'm never gonna say exactly what's on the page. Ever. And I'm always flipping. I'm always dipping. Because you got to remember, you get an audition that's 50 people. Right? And and this is the the, the, the best it can be right here. Five of them going to do that. So what is going to make you stand out? Whoever does that little extra something. Yeah. And I always gave them that little extra something. You can't go in there and just do this. Do it good. You end up, what you did, Friday the 13th? Yep. I was still homeless when I did that. <laughs> yeah. How did you do this? Return of the Living Dead? And you still didn't have a regular place to stay yet. Well, by then I did. By then I did. So let me, let me tell you how I got out. So I started, this was the hardest part of being here. I ended up moving, so I was sleeping on a park bench. And some guy, like I said, I looked like- Like Forrest Gump? Yeah, downtown LA. Because I was stuck downtown because I didn't know you could go anywhere, uh, Hollywood. So I spent my time skid row. And I was sleeping downtown. I was sleeping behind the bus station. And the guy said, young man, what are you doing out here? My name is Miguel Nunez. I'm 640 Cemetery Street, Western North Carolina. I came here to be an actor. He was going, oh, God. And I would never understood why everybody was going, oh, God. And he was like, dude, you can't be in the streets like this. You got to go to the Union Mess. Go to the mission. I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. what is a mission? I never heard about it. And that's why if you go to the Union Rescue Mission, there's a picture of me in there, too. Um, and it, was a, it ain't what it is now. The one yeah, I yeah. went to was a little nasty, dirty... Uh, uh, rats wouldn't even go in there. Rats mm -hmm. went by there and said, nah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the original one I went to. And you wake up and you, it was just pews because it was like a little church. And you get uh -huh. there before and you sleep in the pew if you get there at night so just so you be inside. Yeah. And and you wake up in the morning and all these, oh, you know, and I remember just, and I, they said, I went in the guy says, what? What is, oh, I'm itchy. He says, you have lice on you. Oh. Uh. And then they have to go downstairs. You have to get sprayed with poison and then they feed you. And I, I went through all of that and then I ended up getting on welfare. I got a job, and then I found out you can go to Hollywood now. Because I used to sleep on the bus. I was going in the back in the wintertime. That last seat is where yeah, the engine yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the heat shoot up. Right. I right remember so does. many times they'd be waking me up, and they were parking the bus downtown in the lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I did what I had to do. And even then, I absolutely... Let me show you how naive I was. I was so naive, a gay dude turned me down. Excuse, <laughs> excuse me? Exactly. I'm going to explain that. This is how naive I was. I was walking around a little kid downtown L.A., as naive, naive as you could possibly be. Right. And I walk away and this guy comes to me, he goes, hey man, what are you doing out here? And I said, my name is Miguel Nunez, I'm 640 Cemetery Street, what's <laughs> like line? I came in, I want to be an actor. He said, why are you in the street? I said, I don't have nowhere to live, I sleep by the bus station. He said, you do? He said, you want to sleep with me, stay with me? <laughs> you had it right when you first tried right, to right. He said, you want to stay with me? I was like, I can stay with you? He was like, yes, <laughs> yeah, I got it, y'all, come on. He said, you, you got in the clothes? And I'm so naive, I damn near said everything was, nobody even be looking for me. 
I'm like, no, I'm here by myself and I don't have no clothes because my suitcase was stuck in, the, in that locker thing when you put your cord in, it can't last forever. It only lasts for a few times. So and he was like, well, come on, you don't have nothing. Come on, let's go. And we walking and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a West Coast guy. I'm gonna be a movie star. He goes, stop. <laughs> and I go, what? He goes, man, look, you can't go with me. I was like, what, what, what? And my grandmom always said I talk too much. So I thought that was it. And I got all sad and I was like, I, I won't talk no more. I won't talk no more, I swear. And he was like, no, 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 that's not it. He said, I'm gay. I said, I'm happy too. Cause I had never heard that word. Never in my life I'd heard, I'd heard the word homosexual. The only thing I'd heard was punks growing up in the little town I was. So I didn't know what it was. And he was like, no, 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 no. I sleep with men. And I was like, and then first thing my grandma was talking about, I was like, oh, okay. All right, all right. And listen to this. This is God. He goes, look. He gave me $20. He said, listen, don't talk to people. Don't talk to people. And if you got to walk around, walk around in the daytime and sleep at night. He was, he was like, gave me advice, gave me money and sent me on my way. Yeah, because you were like Gomer <laughs> Pyle. I'm worse. <laughs> Good Lord. If you ever want to see me little, like 4'11", like really little, like because I grew in, in one summer. If you want to see me that little and you want to see me homeless and poor, I was stealing food off of Jumping Jack Flash's little area, right? And then they were like, get out of here. And Joel Silver, who I love to this day. And man, Joel Silver came, I'll oh, leave him alone. Leave him alone. I said, my name is Gideon Nunez. I came from North Carolina. I want to be an actor. Da, da, da. He said, oh, well, put him in the scene. So the next time you watch that movie, watch when Whoopi Goldberg gets dressed up to go meet Jumping Jack Flash and she's walking down the street with a dress. They go, go. And you're going to see the skinniest looking, crack hair, home, homeless looking kid ever. And I was like, hey, baby. She said, get your butt out of here. That was me. Because I said right here that you did Jumpin' Jack yeah. Flash. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, you did a lot of other stuff. You, uh... Lots. Lots. Of yeah, things. lots of lots stuff. Lots of things. You know, Fox series, My Wildest Dream. But uh, you was way back in, um... My first TV series was 1987, Tour of Duty, the best show. Yeah, Tour of Duty here. You did Action Jackson. Joel Silver gave me that right after that movie. And Lethal Weapon 3, you gave me that right after that. And let's just go and talk about Harlem Nights. Harlem Nights was a awesome dude it was so fun because eddie was directing he was just every night please everybody go back and watch harlem nights harlem again nights, it was what yeah. in the world was it like because the only thing i could uh, liken it to was when i did coming to america that's exactly what it was a bunch, like. of, bunch of big celebrities 100%. all at once yeah but you had richard pride yeah and you yeah. had red fox and yeah. you had Della. It, and, and if you know eddie would say it would come on like, oh, damn what? Red Fox, man. He always wanted to be in more stuff. He always wanted more lines. If you notice the movie, he always wanted the last line. He always did it. Yeah, shut up, mm -hmm. fat bitch. Mm -hmm. He always had to have that last line. Well, you know, he's red. He, he was red. Well. I love Richard. I still watch Sanford and Son. I, how does it feel to look back at that, though? I still watch. I love does it. Does it get you excited still? No, I don't, I, I've don't. i never gotten excited about anything I've done. You didn't get excited about that? You looked excited a minute ago. No. I was excited about the fun you had. Mm -hmm. Okay, good old hanging with Mr. Cooper. Oh. And uh, really genius. I love it. What's that on Martin? Oh, what? you did Martin. Yes. You did Martin Ricky too. To call me. And Thea Vidal, who's oh, yes. my friend. Yeah, I did Thea's first TV show. And guess who was a little kid on the show? Um, <laughs> um, um, Ray J's sister. Oh, Brandy. Yeah. Brandy. Because and I said, listen to me. She was like, I can sing. And she'll tell you this story too. And I was like, really? I said, let me hear you. And she sung in the room. I was like, what the hell? Give me a, and I grabbed her hand. I took her out to the audience. I said, hold on, stop, stop. They were like, what is he doing? Stop. This little girl has a voice. And she sung for the audience. I said, let me tell you something. You're going to be a huge, huge star. I promise you. And she was. Yeah, and she, and she, she is. She was awesome. Yeah, Thea, well, has Thea the, was mean the to first, her. Thea, <laughs> well, Thea was the first black woman to have a show in her name. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And she Thea. was awesome. I loved her. Yeah, I, I still love Thea. She me had me back when I was I just watched her on some show well. with a bunch of other comedians, other female comedians. She was. I just saw this. It was the other night, late. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, let me talk about real quick because we're skipping around, but this is fine. I want to talk about, for me, yeah, baby. one of the low-key funniest roles that you did for me was when you did Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Now, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think that that was so comedic, but for me, what tickled me was how 
fucking annoyed you were with Martin. Oh. Like you were so annoyed. Like I'm the fucking chicken, you know. You <laughs> every time you see what I looked at him, I yes. every time he <laughs> that shit. It's the little me. subtle thing. Yes, that's why. It's the subtle it. shit. Yes. I said he was so fucking annoyed. That cracked me the hell. Because you can, you can literally be the focus of a scene, and, and even be, if and it, do the least, and exactly, and not have any lines in it. Right. <laughs> Don't look at him. Look at me. Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, now, Regina. Yeah, I love her. Uh, are you still friends with Regina? I've, absolutely. She's a yeah. really, I love her. I can't see not being friends with Regina. Yeah. Once Sweetest you. girl in history. Never changed. Yeah. yeah. She's one of those people that doesn't didn't let, you know. And she had it in her young. Really? Good look. Yeah, from 22. Oh, 227. 227 two, two, yeah, seven all right. right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now. You did Sparks. Oh, my favorite show. Was it? It was my favorite show. Tell people about Sparks. Sparks, you know, it's a weird it was on UPN. Sparks. UPN, it was, it was a show with me, Terrence Howard, Robin Givens, this James Avery, Aretha S. Kinchin. It was really, and Kim Whitley. Yeah, Kim, Kim Whitley was Uncle hilarious. Kim. And I remember I was on a plane coming back from doing a film. Actually, I was, I didn't get the audition for that show because I was told that the cast director said I wasn't right for it. Mm. So the executive producer, Ed Weinberger, was on an airplane coming to L.A. and saw me in something on the plane. He got off the plane and said, I saw this kid, and da 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 and, and, and that's how I got the audition. I rushed over to the studio. I'm like, what's going on? And they was like, listen, da, da, da. I thought it was a drama, right? And it's just about a law firm, da 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 Robin yeah. Givens and James Avery show. I said, Robin Givens and James Avery? Oh, this is right at the, what you, oh, good. I said, what, what, give it to me, give it to me. And they said, okay, here, you're gonna have to pair it with somebody. Uh, what's your name? Terrence Howard. Come here, you two go together. And they put everybody together. And I said, okay, you guys are gonna be brothers. Now, this is how Ed Weinberger does his networks, which has never been done before in this event. Ed Weinberger is so big. Ed Weinberger created the college mm -hmm. show, Cheers, mm -hmm. Taxi, Mary Tyler Moore, Amen. Ed said, we're not going to no uh, network. I'm not going to no network and sit in no office and have my people in it. You're not gonna get the best representation of what they can do. So he made the network come to the studio. He rented a stage. We had to go to wardrobe, make all this stuff. They had the sets and everything. And then they said, okay, you two go. And Ed, right before we get Ed said, listen to me. Don't worry about the lines. You would love Ed. Yeah, I would. You I'm would. Because I lines. remember we were doing Sparks. <laughs> if, some, if a writer said, say what's on the page, Ed said, what did he say? He said, did you just tell an actor to say what's on the page? And no, no writers could ever come back on the stage. He said, the script is a guideline. You hired them to do it. Let them do it. Right? So Ed says, listen to me, don't worry about the script. Just go in there and just kill it. Be funny. I said, wait, so we don't have to, we ain't married to these lines on the page. He said, yeah, I said, right, shit, let's go. So I go in and me and Terrence in there, we're doing it. And we come out and Terrence said, hey man, all right, man, he'll tell you story. I'll see you later. I said, what? He said, man, I'm sorry. I messed up all my lines. I said, brother, stop. I will see you on the set Monday. They were laughing so hard at my shit. They never even knew you said your line wrong. I'll see you Monday and walk out. <laughs> but what he didn't know was, the Greg character was, he was that. So every time I saw him struggling with something, yeah, yeah. I jump in with a joke. So it made them think he was doing the Greg thing. So it worked perfectly because Greg was the bubbling, uh, stumbling brother. When I saw him with a line, I was like, wait, 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 wait. And I come up with something hilarious. So they thought he was in on it. I said, brother, I promise you I'll see you on the set Monday. And he was on the set Monday. So now we do, we come to. Why do fools fall Why in do love? Fools fall in love? What an experience. Why do Frankie Lyman so gay? story. And I and that audition, um, he came in uh Ruben Your Kemp. wives, the, the wives were what Vivica, Vivica Fox, Halle, Halle Berry, and Oh, uh Layla Rashawn. Layla Rashawn. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. That was an awesome project. Yeah. All that music, the state, and they did it right. Do you enjoy doing like a themed uh, you know, throwback like uh, Motown-ish type stuff. Oh, I would or, love, yeah. Or other I, kind of I, have, I, I love doing anything. Me, I love mm -hmm, anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I did Street Fighter. I was a street fighter. I did Scooby-Doo. Uh, you know, I love doing anything fun and exciting. Every little project is fun and exciting to me. It is. I still is, get excited about it. But you have worked in some really star-studded things. Like, you've been around some heaters. And then, as if, then, then comes life. <laughs> Woo! Miguel, I know. I gotta tell you, <laughs> I know from myself, and I know Guy, and of course Eddie, and you know Bernie, everybody. You know them all. Um, I I know that I've probably seen life 
probably 45 <laughs> I say 30 times. Yes. Okay. Because, first of all, on BET and stuff, it used to come on back to back, back to, to back. back to back. And I'd watch it sometimes back to back. Every to time back. I see it, you got it. For some reason, you just got to stop. You got to yeah. stop. You got to stop. Biscuit. <laughs> Your character, Biscuit. Yes. Now, I'm going to tell you what we were saying to the people that are, are watching and listening, what, what you and I were saying before the interview started. I said that as funny and as quirky as you are, you have a deep, dark, you have a, you have a lot of richness to pull from, which person wouldn't automatically see. But when you go hard and do the hard stuff and the deep stuff, that blows me. And I'm going to tell you, you was funny and quirky and all that. But when you said, I'm fucking out of here, Miguel, I could cry right now. And you started running, running, and you're like, I'm gone. Like, whatever. And they shot you. Like, I'm choked up, dude. I, like, I can right tell you something now. About that. I can tell you something about that scene. Jesus. When I did that scene, that, there was no speech. Remember when 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 Gold Mouth, the big, you ate your cornbread? When, when they started going to the end, they went to him, and he turned, and he just faded out. Yeah. That's how they got rid of us. All they had was me running to the gun line and getting shot. I went to the driver like, wait, wait, wait. I'm dying today. What do you mean? I'm, I'm just going to get shot? I said, you're not even going to tell the audience. I didn't get, you know, he faded now. I didn't get it that time. I'm like, so I'm just going to, what? You just going to, all of this stuff with him and now he's going to disappear and go away? He said, Miguel, I'm not a writer. What are you talking about? I said, well, we got to give him a reason for doing it. He said, what are you talking about? That's something you go talk to the writers about. We're getting ready to shoot it right now. So what's the reason? I tell you what, bring the cameras. Let's go. So I went over there and I was like, and Edison was doing everything I said, I made up all of that by going home. And when I pulled the paper out for my mom, it was a call sheet. Eddie was like, oh. Eddie was like, yeah, man, what's wrong with you? None of that was in there. And another thing, when I said, don't be scared, uh-uh, don't be scared. As famous as that line is and become, Eddie is so smart. He walked up to me right after I finished and said, hey, if I was you, I would get that thing, that line registered. Don't See, they wasn't scared. fucking with us back then. They still ain't fucking with us. But you said you definitely deserved an NAACP award, Soul Train award. I ain't never got no award. BET, I don't know nothing. I think it's just my name, Miguel Nunez. Because I've been doing stuff uh, on they BET for years. <laughs> I think it's, it's because that. And they be, I've been going on like for other people uh -huh. and, and doing stuff for them where they have specials and I go home and talk for them. And these are people who were extras on all the shit you know, you I've done. You absolutely deserve some kind of like a lifetime achievement. You know, you don't have to get over You ain't going to never that. find anybody with it. May not be black without him DB credits me. Never. It's not possible. Not even Sam Jackson. That hurts me. <laughs> I don't care. My reward is helping other people. My reward is when people come up to you and say, hey, and they're smiling. Because everybody say, Miguel, why are you so accessible? Why are you so accessible? Why do you let people do this to you? And why, why you that? And Eddie explained it to me a long time ago. And it really, really helped me. He said, you got to remember, man, when these people go home and close their doors and put their security code in, and they got their wife and their children, it's just them and you. You've been on there with, with them all oh, the whole, their whole life. Mm -hmm. The kids watch Scooby, then they grew up with you. They, so when they see you, that's why it's this. They feel like they know you. It's a, you're part of their family. You've been in their house with them at night. What are you talking about? And you act like this. They don't get that because they, they've been a part of you. Yeah, well, it's easy for Eddie to say that because he is not, in fact, accessible. <laughs> so what the fuck? Listen, I, I had a lady <laughs> once. Listen, I had a lady once. I've been lying, right? And, you know, it's in Atlanta somewhere. And the counter's down there. I'm standing there. And she's doing like this. She said, you know who you is. <laughs> and the guy behind me said, no, who is he? And I got a suit on and everything. And he said, no, no, no. She said, come here. And she drug me back. There to, and then the guy behind the counter, she said, oh, no, he's in the movies. Aggressive. So the guy said, what do you mean you got a movie star here? She goes, oh, so now I guess she's going to try to show up for the owner. She's going to start dragging me to the counter. I said, whoa, lady, what are you doing? She said, you know what? You are very rude. <laughs> Yeah. I was rude because I wouldn't let her drag me up. Yeah, yeah. It but I was happens. still nice. You got to be nice. It happens. You got to deal with it. It's okay, so it. as Biscuit, when when they presented it to you, oh was, good, I'm glad you asked Biscuit, me that. Was Biscuit a gay character when they presented it to you? Okay, yes. When they they didn't present it to me, they <laughs> gave me us to read the script. Let me know, Brian Grazer. Let me know which role you want to play. Right. Oh, let me know which role you want to play. I wanted to play the gay guy because I thought it was a deeper role and I could do more with that. Everybody else was just, you know, the only other member one really was Bernie and everybody else had some funny stuff, but 
there was enough deep deep enough for me to play. Mm -hmm. Everybody remember Biscuit. Mm -hmm. Everybody had emotions for Biscuit. You know, did you cry when when go when when you eat your cornbread diet? No. Oh, no. So it had the most depth, and I said, that's the one I want to play. Mm -hmm. And so then after that. And I got you... Goldmouth his job too, by the way, which Tiny was always mad at me till he. Tiny Lister? Yeah. Because <laughs> I heard Tiny was up for it. So when I was, when they first said they just wanted to come in and talk to you. So we had to go to university and talk to the executive. And I was like, oh, and I spent my, my time talking about, there's a role in here for a big guy who's saying, I got this guy named Bear. And Bear couldn't get the audition. He kept saying, Miguel, please help me, help me, help me. And I was like, oh, he this, he that, he can sing. He's like a big teddy bear. I they knew was, Bear. Yeah, they said, he's like, and I, they was like, listen, do you, who is this guy? And I said, what? I said, they said, can you get him to come in? And Bear came to Universal and went into the office and had the role when he left the office. Mm -hmm. And then I get a hundred texts from Tiny. Well, you motherfucker. <laughs> Well, um, did you have, uh, uh, as a result of playing Biscuit, which is one of your most iconic roles, um, did you have uh, gay, uh, la um, you know, did you did people like associate you with being gay? Did Not you really. Rumors? No, nope. I've rumors? never had that on me. Well, it's probably because say, I don't roll well, too many of these that. sisters and brothers and mothers that. and. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because they know at least a mother, a sister, or somebody that, that I don't, don't, that I don't flip. So it's, <laughs> it ain't never really, it ain't never really been on me. I mean, hey, listen, God bless you. I love everybody. I'm not. If you're gay, you're gay. You're you're you're, you're transvestite. You're transvestite. I believe that God said we're supposed to love love our neighbors as ourselves. I love everybody. It's just not me. Joanna man. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was not right for that too. Is told. What? <laughs> I didn't okay. get the audition. Mm -hmm. Will Smith had been telling me for years. He, we, he took me to um, Miami to train for Muhammad Ali because I was training, right? So he told me for years, Miguel, listen to me. You got to start playing golf. That's where the big roles happen. Exactly, it's out on the golf course. When y'all reading for this little stuff, the big roles already given away, da, da, da. So it was years out of the clear blue sky. I said, you know what? I'm going to go take a golf lesson, right? So I go to Witsit. And I'm taking golf lessons with the black guy who's like good. I mean, he, everybody uses him. So I'm there, he's teaching me this stuff like that first time ever on a golf course. Just all right. And he's like, he goes, Hello? He said, Hey man, my name is Jesse Vaughn. Man, you don't spark through, you're great. Listen, I'm directing a movie called Joanna Man. And we're having the um, um, um screen test at Warner Brothers. I will die if you would come and do it. And that's how I got the audition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay, so you know they had been. Uh, which is yet another crazy classic. I know they hollered that at you walking down the street. But um, so then there was the whole um, issue of black men in dresses type thing. I heard that. What's your, what's your take on that as an actor and then just as a black man? Well, to me, it depends. Answer them both separately. All right, as, a, as an actor, well, to me, it's, it's the same. To me, I don't give a damn. To me, it's like, I don't, I don't if you're talking about an actor in a movie, funny movie like Joanna Man, Martin played a mama, da, da, da. I think that's the asinine, uh, uh, that's asinine to even equate that with anything. But I don't know about when you see dresses on the, um, on, and, and on the red carpets, that kind of thing. I would never wear any, any of that stuff unless it was just something so freaking double-breasted fly with something. I don't well, know. Wait a minute, because one is a character that's right. been written for you, and the other is a self-expression of their own self. Well, so that's what I'm saying. If you're going to, you can't, if you're going to say, you say that people talk about guys in dresses, how are you going to talk about guys in dresses and a character? Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I can understand you having that argument for guys in dresses on a thing where you could be saying, well, hold on, that's a da-da-da. I, I get it there, but I don't get it in the movies. Um. So, do you feel that there is a uh, low key plot to demasculate de brothers because you don't see them trying to put Tom Cruise in a dress. And I'm not talking about late Tom Cruise, the icon. <laughs> I'm talking risky business, I Cr Tom Cruise. Well, Tom Cruise on top right now because that, that. Well, movie, I know he's been on top. That he movie just, just weird, passed the Titanic. That's fine. He's just a weird ass Scientologist, but he's an acting beast, and you can't. Yes. Can't, can't read him for that. Time. But, uh, you know, they're not trying to put, like, Bon Jovi in a dress. They're trying to put, you know... But uh, here's the thing. They ain't putting these people you see in these dresses. These people are putting themselves in these dresses. Bon Jovi's just not doing it. And nobody's putting them in them dresses. Everybody you see in one of them, they put them in there. Chappelle so it's the not them. Thing. Yeah, exactly. it is true. Ain't nobody put them in there. Hey, Sam, wear this. Oh, hey, somebody wear this. <laughs> you got the worst. Are you freaking kidding? You can. You got the right to well, say that. Well, you do have the right to say yeah. I'm not doing that. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there you go. When, okay, so you was married, though, Miguel. What's up? I was married for 15 years to a lovely, incredible woman. Didn't work out. That's the bottom line. The bottom line is on that is um, we kind of grew apart. You know, I was on the road a lot. I was on the road a lot. I was doing plays. I did one play with Jakari Johnson. Were you being a little whore on the road? Absolutely not. Mm. Okay. Was I, she? No. We but we grew apart. You can't be away for six months and then do another one for six months, then another one for six well, months. Well, you can't be away from me for six months because I am in fact a philanderer. Ooh. So I can't I can't keep it together for six months without you, baby. Damn. Can we take a break? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go do it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, okay, so um, are you still in touch with her? Oh, yes, we're really good really friends. Good She's friends. an amazing, good amazing, thing. wonderful friend, That's amazing, wonderful mother. She's a, a beautiful person. She's a Christian, and uh, we're really good friends now. So. Black Dynamite, brother. <laughs> I love that movie. Black Dynamite, Dynamite. <laughs> Were you in it? I did voiceover oh, for okay. it. Yeah. I did voiceover yeah. for it. And he's, he's, uh, he's uh, now one of the characters on, on my show Family Business now, too. I really yeah, love. Michael John. I and love Michael John. You work. Hey, he's my, got a cowboy film coming out like that. My boy works with you on Family Business. Um, the Soul Train. Uh, my oh, brother. Ski. Oh my yes, God. He's my he's my favorite Louis character Carr. on the show. He's my favorite character. And I tell Ooh. everybody from there, dude. He is so. I never knew he was an actor like that. Okay. He is okay. Right. Brilliant. Because we first only knew him as a Soul, soul Train, train dancer. dancer, but he stole the show then. He did. Then he started hanging out with you know New Edition. They latched onto him, so we see him in the videos and stuff. Yeah. I think that he always had acting uh, uh, aspirations. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't know, and then everything he got it and fell he in place. Murdered it, and this murdered right here, it. though. But this right here, dude, he's family business. He's gangster. Good. I tell everybody, you gotta see, dude. You won't believe it. He's dude. We know him. Hold his eyes. Oh, he's good. He and is plus, I had a crush on him, and I got to kiss him one time at the Soul Train uh, tribute thing to Brandy and him having. It was amazing. He dipped me. Okay. <laughs> anyway, off the uh, that was off the chart. Okay. So, um, all right. Now, school dance. Yes, I'm in that. I know. You killed it too. School damn, you killed it. And at the end of Why the movie, do you think this okay, first of all, the fans know about school dance. It's an underground, you know, uh one of those underground things. That's why I am the main queen of the underground, because I'm always in some underground shit. But school dance was star studded once again. Yes. George Lopez. Yes. Yourself, myself, uh Bobby G and Lil Duval and Kevin Hart and Mike Epps and Scruncho and uh, the Amber Rose back in the day and the new boy. I didn't. I wasn't in it. I just executive produced. It. Yeah. Yeah. But and you were it on was set awesome. When I was and she had, at the end of the movie, we was like, "How about we do? We gonna let her? You know how you have the, all the set ends?" And she start talking shit. So we just kept the camera going. She walked completely off the set. Camera off, still going. Walk past all of us looking at the, at the monitors, but and, and gun, she walked past us still shit talking shit. And she brilliant. Yes. you made me do that. Yeah, I know. You made me do that. And they kept make me do these things. Yeah. It's like, just so, um, why set. do you think that movie didn't get to? It was that was supposed to really that could really. I, I, it could, why? What happened still with can. Lionsgate? It still can. It can be it, a re-release. Well, I, I honestly don't know. You need I, to talk I, to your boy Nick. I, I don't really know what happened to him. I thought the movie would do a lot. All those you people. Still that, talk to that's Nate? why I say, no, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Cause you know, he, oh. but <laughs> it's so many stars in there that you just mentioned that I had forgotten about that. Yeah. Could def, it could be a hit now. It's all about timing, you know. I know. Now we mentioned, you mentioned Will a little earlier, Will Smith. Where were you? Oh. Were you watching in real time? No. The slap heard around the world. What do you think? What would you do if you were Chris? Rock, go. Okay. First of all, I was on a set and somebody called me and said, did you just see what happened? I'm like, what are you talking about? I said, we'll slap Chris. I said, oh, Nick, stop kidding. <laughs> I, I, it took me a long time. I'm like, dude, stop. It's not possible. <laughs> it's not humanly possible. He said, turn on the news. I'm like, it's not possible. Now I'm like, there's nothing. Okay. <laughs> and I hung up. Then somebody else called me. Then I went and I sat down and I started going, da, 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 and then I saw it. To me, I, I'm, I'm like Chris, I'm still trying to process it because we know Will. It's like something you would have never expected in a billion years. But here's the thing I say, this is how you know that's not really Will. Because if somebody's like that, you would have seen some 
type of little bit of something coming out somewhere down the line over the last 20 years, not just one time. I don't know what was internally going on between them. I know he regrets it. I know he's sorry about it. I know he wish it hadn't happened. And I do believe in time, him and Chris will be friends of grand. I know Will is an amazing person and everybody does. You gotta remember, you see a little something from somebody. Hey, I remember that time when he did this, da, da, da. there's never been any of that with Will. So we can't, everybody start throwing everything on him because he made one mistake. We all make mistakes. It was horrible. Now, Chris Rock is a <laughs> genius. Chris Rock is a genius. Chris Rock is, I became a better person because of Chris Rock. I swear to you. After seeing that because of me, I'm like, I would have whirled a microphone I mean, and I would have, I'm going to tell you something. I would have had to have been shot. <laughs> I would have had to have been shot because I wouldn't let no security, I wouldn't let nobody stop me. I, I, can, you, can you squad, Miguel? Nigga, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look. And, and he turned around and walked away. So I'm, I'm going 900 miles an hour and I'm doing that first. But all of that is ignorance and craziness that Chris Rock showed exactly how you should have handled. Every young person out there, Chris Rock showed not the America and the world. Uh, Chris Rock told what the Bible means when he said, turn the other cheek is not literally, it's turn the other cheek is, is ignore something like that. Listen, Chris Rock, Chris Rock changed me. I was always, you know, I'm going to hey, on the freeway. You know, somebody cut me off with that kind of stuff. I remember right after that happened, so many times I was like, what would Chris Rock do? Ah. <laughs> yeah. And I, our generation said, what would Jesus do? The next generation <laughs> can say, what would Chris Rock do? Because Chris Rock handled it like a true professional. He I, kept it going. He didn't even say shit. He slapped shit on me. He said crap. I mean, he was just, he kept it going. He kept his posure. He kept the thought about the show. He kept it professional. He could have, he could have done a million a other million, things. A million other things. But and he I chose could, to do the right, best, respectful, It was the best amazing thing, thing was to do nothing because <laughs> any other thing. Correct. Any other any reaction other thing. would have been a complete. It was already a disaster. A disaster. It would have been worse. His, but it wasn't his disaster. Thank you. There you go. And so without doing anything, that made it just that I, yeah. hey, hey. Because you know. if you would have reacted, right now it was, you see what Will did? If you had to react, it would have been, you it see what been, Will and would, Chris did? It would have been You see what Will and Chris did? And then you don't know what kind of family is out there that might be trying to get involved. Like, uh-uh. It would have been so, Chris, it my hat's anything. off to Chris. God, I mean, it was God bless truly you. Amazing! I seriously, sincerely mean. You know, some of that might have just person. been. I'm stunned. Like this didn't. No, but yeah, happen. but you can see the stun part. But when you go like this, and you pick the mic up and you start doing that, that means you you're picking up from it and you're picking up from your. I look at all the subtle stuff. You know, so when you go like this now, because if you notice, he went. He did that, and he, and it, and he ooh, stopped. He right, stopped. right, yeah. and then he went back to the oh, show. Oh, because all of us have watched it in slow motion. Yeah, he kept he kept the professional. <laughs> he kept the professional. <laughs> Chris is a hero. I watched it in slow-mo. I backed it up. I freeze-framed it. All that. Yeah. Just like the Zagruder tape. I was, I was watching film. that shit. I was watching I that. I swear to you, I was, I, and I'm still in shock. I still can't well, believe you, it happened. So, Miguel, now, you know, let's get, everybody gets an awkward moment. Let's talk about this grocery store incident. Yes. Okay. It was rumored, too, that, you know, it got all out in the press that Miguel Nunez Arrested for I did not know I was famous until that happened. Well, you weren't until that happened. Yeah, but Miguel I had to be. Uh, arrested for shoplifting groceries. I know good and goddamn well that you don't need no motherfucking groceries. What happened? Little ignorant woman would make me stand outside and have a 3,000 line outside. A 3,000 line outside with two or five, four or five people in it. And I would always go up to her and give her problems. She was, me and her always argued. So I go inside the store, I go inside, I get all my groceries, and it's, and it's a long line, and then I, my credit card don't work. She said, I said, can I just put my groceries here? She said, no, if you come back, you got to get back in line. So why can't I just leave it here and just go get the car? She said, yeah, no. So she turned around, left out, I just pushed the car and went on out. <laughs> put my groceries in that the car. Was, that was a real niggardly Hold move on, hold on. You did. Put my car, groceries in the car, and then later on, I came back to pay her. No, Miguel. And she said, no. Right. Because by then, you had stolen the She groceries. said, that's what she said. But the, the police said, the police said, hold on. Don't worry about it. This happened a hundred times. Like, I got this. 
He came back and said, Lou, have you had any conversations with this woman before? I said, why? He said, because, you know, we, we supposed to just get the money from you and give it to her. She said, she don't want it. So, okay. So they took me to the station. Went to the station. They had to fill out all this paperwork, right? And the DA said, okay, let, let him go. It's, let go. Because stealing is the intent to deprive. When you go back to pay, that killed that. Unless you's a nigga. Right, right, but when you, stealing, but even if you steal, go back to pay, you could have gotten shot yeah. if you'd have done that shit in the after, hood. After, <laughs> no, not in the hood in Beverly Hills. Oh hell shoot yeah! Your ass. Um, you tried to run up out of there with a brisket, and or they lost. Like that. But but we did a good thing because we got in touch with um with um uh, um um you know after they released it because you know I went back to pay they me and the uh, rafts we got together we did a a, a drive and a raise but like Miguel, three thousand no, dollars. Wait I'm a minute, you, no, I'm not letting you escape this. Miguel, that was the blackest shit you probably ever done. It, you took the, you said, know. fuck this bitch. You took the girl, you got in the car and smashed. Correct. I'll catch the bitch on the flip flop. I'm going to go back and pay and it took your black ass to jail. <laughs> listen, listen. You can't you think you privilege. Pl- you I hate got- lines. I'm not going to wait. I don't give a damn if I, I paid $3,000 a month for uh, 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 parking tickets because I'm parking right in front. I don't give a damn about the fire hydrant. I can't walk. My knee's bad. And I'm not going to come back and get in your line for the groceries. I'll bring back the money when the line is down. Ass. Why can't I bring you back the credit card when the line is gone? Oh, my God. You can if you got a hookup at the grocery store. All right. See? I know now, I learned my lesson. Hood, what you were talking about, I could do some shit like that. Why? Because I have hookups at the grocery store. I'm trying to meet a nigga at the gas station. <laughs> Now, that's what's really going on. That's what's really going on. I need a boyfriend at the gas station. Yeah. So, you know, I've done projects. I'm going to get off this thing now. I'm going to ask you some other shit. So I've done some projects with you before, and ain't none of them never flew. Now, why? It's you, baby. (laughs) (laughs) God damn it, I knew it. Because when I'm in it without you, they fly. (laughs) It's got to be you, though. That's all I can say. No, we got to do something. The thing is, you you never know what's going to hit, and you never know what's going to hit. I know. Gonna I didn't shot. That's the bottom line. You know, line. Chappelle's shot You've 13. probably done 90,000 movies. I have. I just dropped one on fucking yeah. IG today. 1,000 movies. And, 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 and you uh, never know. And it was a Jamie Foxx project. Yeah. It was, it was, it was start studded. And you never lit. know didn't what's going to hit. Yeah. Didn't fly. You never know. Um, well, I don't give up. I'll still fuck with you. You just keep problem. going. You just, you're supposed to keep going. I've gotten... A, and that's what I tell to uh, uh, students. I've gotten major film from one shitty little scene mm-hmm. in a TV show. Mm-hmm. I've gotten a TV series on a mm-hmm. network from one shitty mm-hmm. little scene in a shitty little movie mm-hmm. somebody saw at a hotel or oh, somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Every job you do, do the best job you right. can. Knock it out of the park. Every single, you never know who's going to be sitting at a hotel room that's or whatever and see that little stupid movie you did and go, damn, she was good. And write your name down. That's what happens. That's you right. just, there's no small part, like what the famous lady said, there's mm-hmm. no small parts, just small actors. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever that is, it's true because just keep doing, but you got to do, remember that you got to knock it out the park. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you have to be uh, like an individual, like you said, what's going to make you different than the other. Absolutely. Because nobody like Lunel. Right. Nobody. And show anybody. And you know what you're going to get when you get Lunel. You're going to get somebody that's going to knock it out the park, period. Wow. So you, you got Lunel. that. You said it just like we rehearsed it. Now, um, okay, so tell 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 them about family business, please. Family business is on BET Network. It is a drama about the Duncan families. We are a, uh, well, they are a, a family. Uh, they own uh, uh, all high end cars, planes, all of these stuff. But inside the cars, the drugs, bodies, whatever the hell we do, it's a drug. <laughs> I am married to a Duncan. Tammy Roman plays uh, a Duncan. Um, and I'm married to her, so I'm a Duncan by marriage. But I can't tell you what happens in season five, mm. four, which is coming out in September. But that is uh, may no longer be. Uh, are you? Are you? Are you uh, very, very proud of this of this show? Cause it's beastly. <laughs> Hello. I'm proud of the work we're doing. Mm-hmm. But there's issues that I can't discuss right now, but mm-hmm. I promise you when I'm off, I will. Okay. And I tell you, like Chris Rock, I'm still processing. And okay. I promise you it would be not funny. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, you will. I'm here for it. 
Okay, so now if let's just say you could I know you got a million ideas in your head and shout out to your daughters oh, by the you. way thank you my love. you have beautiful beautiful daughters thank you tell them how old your daughters are oh, shout out to your kids what's their name uh, hey mia nicole and charlena nunez and if you ever need a facial you can go see charlene she is the number one facial on this planet i'm, I'm and if you need pr my other daughter nicole has a I'm number in, one firm that's good to know and i'm always in need of a facial by the way oh so i'll talk to you about it'll that blow too. your mind what if you had to uh if, and i know you have a million ideas all the time if you were to put a project together right now, let's say, and you had your top 10 folks that you really want to fuck with, that you really want to put together to do this monster shit that's been in your head for like 15 years, because I know there's a lot. You got these Willy Wonka things going on in your head. Yeah, <laughs> all I, just, the time. I just finished writing the, the first Black Scrooge. So who would. Name me 10 people that you would want to put in that right now. Oh, God. Besides oh. me. You. Um, I like Kevin. I like, the, I'm just people I like. I like The Rock. I love to do a movie with, with The Rock. Um, you say, In my film? I ain't got nothing. You're in the, in the Scrooge film. I'm trying to think of the role they would play. Terrence Howard. Um, um, Vivica Fox. I like Vivica. <laughs> I love Vivica. Me too. Um, just this lot. I mean, I can't answer that. So many. Well, I thought that when you write, you have people in mind sometimes. Well, not don't really. Don't you, as a writer, have just? Say, I, I don't. I don't have in mind until until I I just write it. My mind is whimsical. I'll be thinking of the character, the Scrooge. I don't think of who gonna play him. Well, who's gonna be Scrooge? Scrooge? Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence. <laughs> and we got Tiny Tyrone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Instead of Tiny Tim. Okay. Well, do you have something? else that you want to talk about that's coming up, though, that might be in the can? You already shot about to drop. How do you feel about these streaming services as opposed to regular TV? I and think cable it's cable dying? Is it's cable good. Cable's not dying. It's just so many. It's just it's so all it does is it's so much content, and it's opening up the market for young entrepreneur writers and producers and stuff because there's now there's so many avenues. There's so many streaming services, so many cable, but it it is kind of diluting the 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 creativity is diluting the the the, the quality in some aspects, but in a lot of aspects, it's expanding and broadening that. So, um, best leading lady. Best leading. I don't have a best leading lady. I don't. I don't know any leading ladies that I could say my best. I like them all. I wanted to ask you about Leah Thomas. You know who Leah Thomas is. The first known transgender athlete to win the division national championship. When and what? Caitlin, Caitlin, our girl Caitlin, agrees with Leah and the critics that it's not transphobic. It's common sense. Boosie, La Boosie. Oh no, 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 no! I agree with that one hundred percent. There okay. is no way in hell some transgender man should be swimming in a woman's contest. Listen to me. You can't change your physical attribute. You can't change that. It's still you can change your physical. How you can't change your DNA? Yeah, he's still and a man. man still he still got muscular. the power. It, and, and he lost. She lost by that much. And that much she lost by was the man. The the fact that it was a man. I believe. I don't think they should be. I don't think transgender should be. I think it's unfair. I think it's a disadvantage to the women, the real women. I really do. Do you cook? Breakfast. Come over. I cook for you. Only breakfast. Well, no, I, I would I, have no, to. I Miguel, have a, I would have to spend the night. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Listen, no, when I was, I, I have a book. Some lady, she went and got all the 80 some 80, 80 plus year old uh, of people, women throughout the entire South before they died and got their number one recipe. Recipes. And I got it in a book. And I want to come over and we can go through it and, and cook one of those meals. I have my, my mother's cookbooks. Okay, well then you invite me over to cook, and we'll and we'll we'll do it. We'll we'll film it. And then I'll invite you over to cook. I like to spend the night. You cook breakfast scenario. You better. ain't gonna be ready for breakfast in the morning. You ain't getting up to two. <laughs> <laughs> that part. So okay, and, part. and in conclusion, hey, are you in a relationship right now? Uh, right now, are you I am looking for anybody. You looking for love? Do you boo down on love? What's the status with Miguel Nunez? I was, I was. So hurt. I was in a relationship for the last eight years, uh, Bridget, and I was really in love with him. We broke up. So, and that was about a year or so ago. And I have been looking, but I am not a good looker. <laughs> so I decided to, I'm not even going to look anymore. So for the last six months, I've just been working, doing my thing. Because if I let, 
God bring it to me, mm-hmm. then I won't make, make the wrong, wrong choice. Because I, I be going for the wrong stuff. Well, what if God brings it to you and she ain't what you be, you know, like, you know, like, if, let, let's say you like uh, tall women with green eyes. And let's say this broad has been a ride or not, not talking about me, we know about us, but uh, like, you know, got some little chick on the corner that's been a rider for you, took care of when you were sick, walk your dog when you're out of town, all the time, what if he sends you that, would you recognize her? At this point, yes. At this point, um, at this point where I'm right now, I done had the fine, the pretty, the beautiful, the stunning, the this, the that, the this, the that, the that. I done had the successful, the this, the that. Right now, I'm just looking for somebody to get along with. Yeah. Period. That's it. All that other stuff is gone. So it's a lot of times you're going to find you might be looking for the right person for you at the wrong time for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about the sex? Because here's the deal. You can have that right or die. Like, do you have a high sex drive, do you think? You're getting older, Miguel. We all are. Shit, you better ask somebody. You better tell somebody. <laughs> no, I don't have a problem with sex. I don't even, I mean, the same thing about my age is the same thing. There's no different than when I was 20 you years ago. You seem very healthy for right a man now. Ain't been 20 sick years in 30 ago. years. 20 years. I have no change whatsoever. Same, I can do the same thing I could do 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't need no help. I don't need no pills. That's I don't what need we nothing. say about you, little skinny yeah. man. <laughs> Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Up. But to me, I was a whole when I first got divorced. You know, you know, da, 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 da. every man is right. You're, 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 you're well. getting out. But I found out, I found out this, and this sounds corny, but it is hundred percent true, and it is where I am in my life right now. Unless you know this, if you don't know this, just listen to me. Sex is a billion percent better when you care about somebody. Yeah, it is. Oh my, it'll, it, it, it's, it's not the thing when you don't care about somebody, you just fucking. Right, right. And you're just trying to come. You want to get them to come. You come. You want to get them to come. Ah, ah, and that's it. <laughs> but when you care about somebody yeah. and you love somebody, I mean, you could, the, the, yeah. the, the, the parts could just touch, <gasps> skig, yeah. and you yeah. both, you know, <laughs> because there's more to it than that. That's what yeah. I had with my ex, and that's what I'm, uh, if, and if it's not that, uh, shit. Jamie Foxx once my said that. My new girlfriend. That, <laughs> Jamie Foxx once said that when uh, uh, a man breaks a woman's heart, it's devastating. But when a woman breaks a man's heart, it's catastrophic. Is I would that agree true? with that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I I had my heart broken maybe twice in my life, and it's the worst thing <laughs> I ever felt in my life. I, I literally yeah. if, when I had my heart broken, I would literally, I promise you, take a scissors and just go whoosh, if I could stop that. If I could make if that would make what I was feeling oh. go away, I would have done it. And to a matter of fact, I might have went. I bit it. So you love hard, baby. Yeah. No. I love hard. I give hard. I, but I'm still a, I'm still a country boy. I still open the doors. Yeah. You know, I'm still uh, that kind of shit. That's delicious. We love that shit. Well, Miguel, goddamn, I think that you know, I I've held you. you hostage here long enough. I love you. Um, I think that it's great that people got to, you know, hear the backstory because, you know, everybody falls for the okie doke and the lights and the camera and what they see. But they should know, especially with those quirky people or comedians or whatever, that there's always a story in the back that is so bananas that you have to ask yourself every day, how I got over? How did I get over? You <laughs> yeah. know? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for coming, Miguel. I love you. God bless every single body. Keep watching Lou now. She's the greatest. She's my dear friend, and I love her to the end. And one day we might be married. Yeah, because I want or breakfast. Or at least have a baby. I want breakfast. Oh, yeah. I give you breakfast. Here, you want it right now? <laughs>